Hi boys and girls, it's Pastor Suzanne in Alaska with some more stories from God's Word, the Bible. Do you believe that God can talk to children? Well, in our first story today, we find out that yes, he can. We have a story about Samuel who learns to hear God's voice. And then we have two more exciting stories with captured arcs and battles with the prince Jonathan. So if you're ready, let's begin our wonderful story. Today's first story is called God Speaks to Samuel. Hannah was unhappy because she didn't have any children. And one day Hannah went to God's house to pray and she made a promise to God. She promised if he would give her a son, she would give him back to God to be a helper in God's house. Well, God answered Hannah's prayer and gave her a son. And you know what? Hannah did not forget her promise. While Samuel was still a little boy, Hannah brought him to God's house to live with Eli the priest and to be his helper. Well, one night after Samuel had gone to bed, he heard a voice calling him and he ran as fast as he can to Eli. What do you want, Eli? He asked, but Eli said, I didn't call you Samuel. So Samuel went back to bed and Samuel heard the voice two more times. But each time Eli told him that he hadn't called him. Then Eli knew that it was God who was calling Samuel. So Eli told Samuel, if he calls you again, say, speak Lord, I am listening. So Samuel went back to bed and then God called him. Yes, Lord, Samuel answered, speak for I am listening. And then God gave Samuel an important message for Eli. Samuel was a good listener and gave God's message to Eli. And he was just a little boy. He was young like you are. And God still would speak to him. And you know what? God will speak to you. If you listen and if you hear him calling you, you say, speak Lord. Here I am. I'm listening. The ark is captured. Well, one day the men of Israel were out to fight against their enemies and 4,000 Israelite soldiers died. The leaders of Israel wondered why God had allowed so many to be killed. They decided to carry God's special gold chest with the Ten Commandments in it called the Ark of the Covenant. They were going to carry it into battle with them. They thought that carrying this special box with them would make God help them. But that was their own idea, not God's. When the enemy army attacked, it killed 30,000 Israelites and it captured the Ark. The enemy soldiers put the Ark inside of the temple of their idol. But when they came back to the temple, the idol had fallen on its face on the floor beside the Ark. They set the idol up again, but that night it fell down in front of the Ark. This time its head and its hands were cut off. And then a terrible sickness came upon the enemy. God was punishing them for taking the Ark. Finally, they put the Ark in a wagon and pulled it by two cows and all by themselves. The cows took it back to the Israelites. You know, we can get into trouble if we do things that God didn't tell us to do. And you can't make God do something. You need to pray and say, God, if it's what you want, then I want it too. And you know what? He always answers those kind of prayers. Jonathan's brave fight. This is our last story. The people of Israel wanted a king like other nations had. God already was their king, so it was really wrong of them to want another one. And God warned the people that if a king was elected for them, then it would bring trouble. But the people wouldn't listen. They wanted to be like all the other nations that were around them. So God picked out a man named Saul to be their king. Saul was good looking and he was strong. He looked just like a king should look. And Saul helped the Israelites win many battles. But one day they had to fight a huge enemy army. And there were so many enemy soldiers that no one could count them. The Israelite soldiers were afraid. They hid in caves and they would not fight. But Saul's son, Jonathan, and one other soldier trusted God to take care of them. 
they climbed a steep hill to where some enemy soldiers were and killed 20 of them. Then God sent an earthquake and the ground shook like that and all the enemy soldiers ran away. Do you ever get afraid of things sometimes? I know it's easy to become afraid, but you know what? We can always ask God to help us when we're afraid because he's always with us. So if you get afraid, just say, God, I'm scared. Please come and help me not to be afraid. And you know what? Pretty soon you will be just fine because he's right there with you. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for the stories today. Thank you for the story of little Samuel, how he learned to hear your voice. And thank you for the story that teaches us not to try to do things our own way, but to always ask you first when there's an important decision to be made. We don't want to be like the Israelites who sent their ark into battle trying to make you do something. We want to always be praying in accordance with your will. And thank you, Lord, for being with us when we're afraid. You're always our help. You're always a good father. And you keep us surrounded by our angels. You keep us safe. Thank you for these boys and girls that are listening today. We ask that you would watch over and protect them, keep them safe and keep them healthy. Give them the desires of their heart and help them to grow up to be strong and mighty men and women who love you, Jesus, and they want to serve you for the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you for listening to our story today. I hope that you enjoyed it. And remember, be good. God is with you all the time. He loves you. I love you. And until next time, this is Pastor Suzanne in Alaska saying bye-bye. Bye-bye.